Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations, here to explain to you how you can make a random wire antenna non resonant. Our resonance can present problems as well as good things with antennas. But when you have a random wire antenna, and you want to use it with your ham radio station, particularly if you have a transmitting station as well as a receiving station, you're going to need an antenna tuner. And if you just run that wire out reasonably as high as you can for a random length, that's why they call it a random wire, sometimes it's truly long, several wavelengths long, then it's a long wire. Otherwise, it's just a random wire wire antenna. Meaning you just sort of string it as far as you want it to go and then stop. Well, when you have a, an unbalanced system like this, and a random wire is an unbalanced antenna system, you're going to need a good radio frequency ground right here at the station. And uh, preferably a good electrical ground as well to protect you against electrical shock. Now let's just suppose that you have a random wire antenna, but maybe not so random. 250 feet long, let's just say. And you want to use that antenna on the HF amateur bands, particularly 160 meters, 80 meters, and 75 meters. 60 meters and say oh 40 meters and maybe even 30 meters. Basically you can tune the random wire with a good antenna tuner or transmatch and get it to resonate and present a 50 ohm impedance to your transmitter but you're going to have to tune that thing a lot and you're going to have directional patterns and things and patterns of high and low currents along this antenna because of the standing waves that will appear on the antenna. You're going to have current loops and nodes and voltage loops and nodes. And if your station happens to be particularly at a current node, you are likely to get RF in the shack. You know what that's all about. If you've ever experienced RF in the shack, you know what that's all about. Well, now suppose that instead of just running that wire out randomly, you can ground it at the far end, by the way, to help protect it against uh, it and you against lightning strikes by directing and discharging any buildup of, uh, of uh, electrostatic energy away from your station and to the ground. But what you can also do is you can connect a large value, or rather a large uh, power dissipation non-inductive resistor of approximately 600 ohms at the far end of the antenna and then ground that with a very good RF ground, preferably with some radials and things. And uh, then what you're going to get, basically you have to match this 600 ohms to the characteristic impedance of a single wire uh, strung horizontally over the ground. And normally at reasonable heights, reasonable lengths, that's about 600 ohms. But you may have to do a little trial and error there. When you do that, uh, half of the power from your transmitter is going to get dissipated in this resistor in the ground. You're never going to see reflection of the electromagnetic field back from the far end. It's just going to be sunk into the ground so that you're really only taking advantage of half of the directional pattern of the antenna. Uh, only the half that points away from your radio. But be that as it may, the interesting thing about an antenna like this, if you choose this resistance value properly, is that you will not have resonant effects. You will not have current loops and nodes along the line. The, the voltage 
to current ratio here will always be about 600 to 1, the ratio of volts to amps along the antenna. You will not get these annoying voltage loops or current nodes that can cause such problems with RF in the shack. And just about any good antenna tuner will be able to handle this kind of an impedance because it's going to be a reactance free purely resistive impedance all the way through the entire frequency range that you intend to use. Very interesting property. A non-resonant antenna. I'll bet you maybe didn't know such a thing could exist, did you? And actually work, other than a dummy load, of course. But it can, and it's being done a lot in the amateur radio community, particularly among DXers, on the lower HF bands. Uh, another method of doing this is uh, the so-called beverage antenna for receiving only. But this will work for transmitting. The problem is you've got to have a really large power dissipation capability in this resistor. If you plan to run 1500 watts at your transmitter, you're going to need to have 750 watt non-inductive resistor. Good luck finding one of those you're going to have to kludge it yourself. But it can be done, it has been done, and it does work. Just an interesting little tech trick from W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations. For now, I shall say 73, which means best regards in amateur radio jargon, and so long for now.